Ever since Amtrak was created in 1971, not much was done to the rails with their equipment being used for the first time. There have been proposals for Amtrak to modernize the rails to make it an easier way to travel around the northeastern United States. So how did this happen? This is Amtrak Modernization Week, a four-part documentary discussing how Amtrak can improve the rails to make it an efficient way to travel. With that out of the way, let's begin. Chapter 1. The Gateway Program. Future of the Northeast Corridor. Amtrak, the biggest rail company in the United States, has many ways to get across the Northeast Corridor, but it is somewhat difficult to travel with many modernization projects that interfere with expansions and bridges on the corridor. So how can the Gateway Program manage to fix this? The right-of-way was originally developed by the Pennsylvania Railroad in conjunction with the 1910 opening of New York Penn Station, which required the construction of the portal bridge over the Hackensack River and North River Tunnels under the Hudson Palisades and Hudson River. The following year, the Manhattan Transfer Station was opened in the Kearney Meadows to allow changes between steam and electric locomotives. This also provided for passenger transfers to and from its former main terminal at Exchange Place in Jersey City or the Hudson and Manhattan Railroad, the forerunner of today's Port Authority Trains Hudson. In 1968, the Pennsylvania Railroad merged with New York Central, but the new Penn Central announced bankruptcy on June 21, 1970. In 1976, its long-distance service was taken over by Amtrak, which had been founded in 1971. The Northeast Corridor is the only rail line that travels under the Hudson River and through New York City. The other rail system, Crossing the Hudson, was developed by the Hudson and Manhattan Railroad, partially in conjunction with the Pennsylvania Railroad. There are three vehicular crossings of the Lower Hudson River, the Holland Tunnel, the George Washington Bridge, and the Lincoln Tunnel. Six tracks connect Newark Penn Station and the adjacent Dock Bridge over the Passaic River. The station and the west span on the bridge, carrying three tracks, were built in 1935. The East Band, opened in 1937, carries one outbound track, and the two Port Authority Trans Hudson Rapid Transit tracks entering and leaving the station. The bridge, owned by the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, underwent repairs as recently as 2009. To the northeast lies the Paths Harrison Station. Between the bridge and the station, Amtrak and NJT trains are aligned on three center tracks to pass through it, with the path using side platforms. At the Sawtooth Bridges, east of the former Manhattan Transfer, the rights of way of Amtrak and PATH and several NJT lanes meet and run parallel to each other. The single track limited use waterfront connection connects some lines using diesel trains on hop and terminal trips with the NDC to the west. Plans call for replacement of the bridges and expansion from two to four tracks, requiring the construction of bridges in the Kearney Meadows at Newark Turnpike and Belleweave Turnpike. The 1910 Portal Bridge, a two-track, rail-only, 961-foot swing bridge over the Hackensack River between Kearney and Secaucus, limits train speeds and crossings and requires frequent and costly maintenance. In December 2008, the Federal Railroad Administration approved a $1.34 billion project to replace the Portal Bridge with two new bridges, a three-track bridge to the north and a two-track bridge to the south. In 2009, New Jersey applied for funding from the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act of 2009 and on January 28, 2010, received $38.5 million for design. In April 2011, Amtrak applied for $570 million for construction from U.S. DOT. New Jersey was expected to contribute $150 million. Plans call for two track bridges, a Porto North Bridge and a Porto South Bridge. Opened on December 15, 2003, at a cost of $450 million, Sakaka Construction is an interchange station served by nine of New Jersey Transit's rail lines, and it's sited where public and terminal trains intersect with those traveling along the Northeast Corridor. In April 2012, Amtrak announced that the project might include a Bergen Loop connecting Main Line, Bergen County Line, 
Pascag Valley Line and Port Jervis Line service to the NEC at Secaucus Junction. The gateway program would build two new tunnels, doubling the road capacity. The current North River tunnels allow a maximum of 24 one-way crossings per hour. The gateway proposal would allow an additional 24 trains per hour. A flying junction is planned for later stages. This will allow Amtrak and New Jersey Transit to continue to use the East River Tunnels and Sunnyside Yards for staging, storage, and carrying Amtrak and EC trains. The Gateway Hudson River Tunnel, one point of which would travel from a point at Weehawken Cove under the Hudson River and its eastern portal south of West Side Yard in Manhattan. The air rights over the West Side Yard are being developed as a residential and commercial district on a platform constructed over the yard as part of the Hudson Yards project. Construction began on the first phase from 10th Avenue and 11th Avenue between 31st Street and 33rd Streets on September 23, 2013. The original Pennsylvania station in New York was completed in 1910 and later demolished starting in 1963. Penn Station is quoted to be as the busiest, most congested passenger transportation facility in North America on a daily basis, used by Amtrak, New Jersey Transit, and the Long Island Railroad and served by several New York City subway lines. As I've mentioned throughout this video, there are many modernization projects to improve the Northeast Corridor and the existing infrastructure to make it a better and efficient way to travel. Amtrak will eventually complete this project and have all the new infrastructure they need to make their transportation a good way to travel on one of the busiest rail lines in the Northeast. Chapter 2. How Amtrak Will Improve the Hudson Tunnel the Hudson Tunnel, one of Amtrak's tunnels running for two and a half miles between New York and New Jersey, has been damaged a few times and needs to be repaired. With also to protect the current functionality of the Northeast Corridor's Hudson River Rail Crossing between New Jersey and New York, they need to construct a new tunnel to make it an easier way to travel. So how will Amtrak fix this? To get some background on the Hudson Tunnel, let's dive deeper to what this project is really about and why Amtrak is doing this. The project is intended to protect the current functionality of the Northeast Corridor's Hudson River Rail Crossing between New Jersey and New York and strengthen the resiliency of the NEC. The preferred alternative would consist of construction of a new rail tunnel beneath the Hudson River, including tracks and other railroad infrastructure in New Jersey and New York, connecting the new rail tunnel to the existing NEC and rehabilitation of the existing NEC tunnel beneath the Hudson River, referred to as the North River Tunnel. The North River Tunnel is used by Amtrak for intercity passenger rail service and by NJ Transit for commuter rail service. The approach to the tunnel begins east of NJ Transit's Frank R. Latunenberg Station in Secaucus, New Jersey, which is five miles east of Amtrak and New Jersey Transit's Newark Penn Station. The tunnel has two separate tubes, each accommodating a single track for electrically powered trains and extends approximately 2.5 miles from the tunnel portal in New Bergen to PSNY. As I've already mentioned, the purpose of the project is to protect the current functionality of Amtrak's NEC service and NJ Transit's commuter rail service between New Jersey and Penn Station, New York by repairing the existing North River Tunnel and to strengthen the NEC's resiliency to support reliable rail service by providing redundant capability under the Hudson River for Amtrak and NJ Transit NEC trains. In addition to the Hudson Tunnel being repaired, the North River Tunnel will also be repaired due to Hurricane Sandy damaging it. Once this project goes into effect, it will reduce rail service because the remaining tube of North River Tunnel would have to accommodate two-way traffic. This very significant reduction in capacity would have a devastating effect on New York and New Jersey commuters who cross the Hudson on a daily basis, Amtrak passengers, and the regional and national economies. With this project going forward, it could really improve the infrastructure on the tunnel, making it a better way to travel across safely. As I've mentioned throughout the video, the Hudson Tunnel will protect the current functionality of Amtrak's Northeast Corridor service and NJ Transit's commuter rail service between New Jersey and Penn Station, New York, 
power repairing the existing North River Tunnel. With these projects going underway, Amtrak will improve the Hudson Tunnel so it can be a futuristic and clean tunnel so trains can run smoothly without significant things getting damaged and having to be repaired multiple times. Chapter 3 Amtrak's DC to Richmond Southeast High Speed Rail Project the Northeast Corridor is an official line of travel in the Northeast, but none other than the Fredericksburg Line will be connected by the proposal of a high-speed rail project connecting Washington, D.C. and Richmond, Virginia. How will this affect the Northeast Corridor by another line competing with high-speed rail? DRPT and the North Carolina Department of Transportation in conjunction with the FRA and the Federal Highway Administration completed a Tier 1 Environmental Impact Statement for the application of high-speed rail passenger service within the SEHSR corridor from Washington, D.C. to Charlotte, North Carolina in 2002. The DC-2 RVA project is but one in a list of follow-on projects and studies designed to evaluate more specific improvements necessary to bring high-speed rail to the region. Funding for the SEHSR in the early 2000s was by the U.S. DOT in the states of North Carolina and Virginia. Both states already funded some non-high-speed rail service operated for them by Amtrak and own locomotives and passenger cars. The DC to Richmond segment of the proposed corridor travels along 123 miles of CSX track currently used by the CSX freight trains, non-high-speed Amtrak trains, and the VRE commuter rail's Fredericksburg line. A new bridge would be built over the James River to expand service to Richmond Main Street Station. Currently north to south through train stop only at Richmond Staples Mill Road Station, using the bypass belt line across the river. In December 2019, Virginia agreed to acquire 350 miles of right-of-way from CSX, effectively giving the Commonwealth control over much of the Richmond to D.C. leg of the corridor. As part of the deal, Virginia will build a new two-track rail bridge over the Potomac River for Amtrak and VRE trains parallel to the existing Long Bridge. The new bridge will take passenger rail traffic off the existing bridge, which will serve only freight traffic. The Virginia Department of Rail and Public Transportation is working to improve intercity passenger rail service in Virginia and throughout the East Coast to offer an important, efficient transportation choice that is competitive with air and auto travel. Amtrak wants to improve the Fredericksburg line to connect it to other major routes that can increase ridership to other passengers in the northeastern United States. High-speed rail projects, just like this, can improve trains by making them faster, efficient, and reliable. Chapter 4, The Future of Amtrak, $7.3 billion deal with Siemens and Avila Liberty train sets. Amtrak has plans to upgrade its equipment to make the trains efficient, reliable, and even high speed. With the proposal of Amtrak manufacturing the Avila Liberty and ALC-42s, it will change Amtrak's transportation of travel. So how will this affect Amtrak's fleet? On July 7, 2021, Amtrak released an article titled Amtrak to Transform Rail Travel with $7.3 billion investment in state-of-the-art equipment. The article is summed up saying that Amtrak will order 83 new train sets from Siemens and they would replace a lot of older equipment used currently. Another detail included a concept sketch of what would be a Simons Venture car with an ALC42 styled cap. No other details were included other than routes that would come with this equipment. The routes included are the Palmetto, Northeast Regional, Adirondack, Carolinian, Cascades, Downeaster, Empire Service, Ethanol Allen Express, Keystone Service, Maple Leaf, New Haven Springfield Service, which include the Amtrak Hartford Line and Valley Flyer, 
Pennsylvanian, Vermonter, and Virginia services. Most of these routes are in the northeastern part of the United States, with the Cascades being in the Pacific Northwest. On February 8, 2022, Amtrak released an article titled Amtrak Debuts New National Network Locomotives. The article summed up saying that the ALC-42s will be fuel efficient, clean, faster, and more reliable than the existing P-42s. Another detail included the routes that the ALC-42 would operate on. The routes included are the Auto Train, California Zephyr, Capital Limited, Cardinal, C City of New Orleans, Coast Starlight, Crescent, Empire Builder, Lakeshore Limited, Palmetto, Silver Star and Silver Meteor, Southwest Chief, Sunset Limited, and the Texas Eagle. There is a lot of other information that has not been broken yet by Amtrak, but there is a video about the news that has been broken by a rail fan. Go check out Worldwide World Friends YouTube channel, and in addition to putting the video in the top right corner. In August 2016, Amtrak announced a $2.4 billion loan from the United States Department of Transportation for the purchase of new high-speed train sets for the SL service from Alstom. These next-generation train sets would replace the 20 existing Bombardier Alstom train sets that were nearing the end of their useful service run. Amtrak ordered 28 train sets that would allow for more frequent service on the route, as well as 30-minute peak service between New York City and Washington, D.C. Each of the new train sets will also have 378 seats and 8 wheelchair spots for a total size of 386 passengers, allowing for a greater passenger capacity. The first prototype set was sent to the Transportation Technology Center in Pueblo, Colorado in February 2020 for high-speed testing. While these trains were testing, they were capable of reaching speeds up to 165 miles per hour. A second prototype was delivered in March of 2020 to Amtrak for testing along the Northeast Corridor, which began in May 2020. The first test run went up to Boston South Station on September 28, 2020. The Villa Liberty plans to enter revenue service in early 2022, and all trains will enter service in late 2022, and then the Basella will retire its fleet. As of writing the script, the Avila Liberty has been delayed and will enter service in late 2023 due to testing requirements. Each Avila Liberty train set has power cars at each end of the train and nine passenger cars. The power cars include a crash energy management system to help meet FRA Tier 3 standards while allowing a 30% reduction in train weight. These trains will also have USB ports, power sockets, Wi-Fi, accessibility features, and other conveniences. The train sets will be equipped with an active tilt system named Tiltronics by Alstom that will allow higher speeds on curved portions of the corridor track at a maximum tilt angle of 6.3 degrees. The new train sets, along with track and signaling improvements, will allow for an improvement in maximum regular service speed to 160 miles per hour on some portions of the route. Amtrak has plans to modernize their equipment to make their trains reliable, clean, fast, and efficient to the transportation industry by competing with other high-speed rail companies. Amtrak is the future of rail transportation by improving their rails to make high-speed rail possible. Chapter 5, Conclusion I just want to say thank you all for watching. I put a lot of time and effort into making these short mini-docs, and it was a lot of work with editing the videos, which took me about a month. I don't really have much to say, but thanks for watching.